This lesson will cover Big Idea 2 Standard 1, and the topic for today is Intro to Electron Configuration. So electron configuration, it's kind of like the electron's address. Electron configuration determines and electrons location so we know from the first unit that we find electrons in the electron cloud the electron configuration will tell us where in that electron cloud we are likely to find that electron so what an electron configuration would look like Let's say the electron configuration was 1, S, 2, 2S, 2, two P, Four. So each color is going to represent something different, and we're going to talk about all of these in a little bit more detail. So those numbers in pink, that tells you which energy level the electron is going to be in. The letters, the S and the P, those letters that are in blue, represent the orbital shape. And then lastly, those exponents are what we call a superscript, those small numbers in purple will tell you the number of electrons. So if I see 1s2, that tells me there are two electrons in an s orbital and they are in that first energy level. So let's kind of go through these three in a little bit more detail. So up first, energy levels. Electrons travel in orbitals based on their energy level. So this is actually the electron configuration, the, the example that I put up here is actually the electron configuration for oxygen. So let's say I had an oxygen 16 isotope that had 8 protons and 8 neutrons. We know how to draw Bohr diagrams, if this is an atom it would have 8 protons and also 8 electrons. We know that we can have 2 electrons in the first orbital. which means six electrons would be in the second orbital. These are the energy levels. We use N to represent energy levels. So the first energy level closest to the nucleus would be N equals one. And I have one, two electrons. 1s2. I have two electrons in that first energy level. In the second energy level, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. In the second energy level, I have a total of 6 electrons. In the second energy level, I have 2 electrons in an s orbital and 4 electrons in a p orbital. So our electron configuration goes right along with what we know about Bohr diagrams. Also, the energy level
corresponds to the period. And periods are just those uh, horizontal rows. So they correspond to the period number on the periodic table. So oxygen has its outermost electrons in that second energy level. Its electron configuration ends in 2p4. Well, if we look at our periodic table, oxygen is in the second period or the second row. So that represents, the period number represents the number of energy levels. Since oxygen is in the second energy level, it has two since oxygen is in the second period, it has two energy levels, and its electron configuration is going to end with that second energy level. So that takes care of the pink numbers. It just corresponds to like the ring or the orbital around our atom. Next, orbital shape. The orbital shape indicates the shape of the electron cloud. And there's a few important things to know. The shape, the number of orbitals that shape can have and the number of electrons that orbital can hold. So there are four different shaped orbitals and we use letters to indicate the shape. So there are s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, and f orbitals. There can only be one s orbital. There can be three p orbitals, five d orbitals, and seven f orbitals. Each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. It doesn't have to hold two, there could only be one based on the number of electrons that the atom or ion has, but each orbital could hold a maximum of two electrons. So if I have one s orbital and that one orbital can hold two electrons, an s orbital could only hold two electrons. If I have three p orbitals, each with two electrons, a p orbital can hold a max of six electrons. Five times two will give me 10. There could be 10 electrons in a d orbital. Seven times two is 14. So an f orbital can hold up to 14 electrons. So notice if we go back to this example, all of the s orbitals only have two electrons because an s orbital could only hold two. A p orbital could hold up to six, but since oxygen only has eight electrons, we only needed to fill the p orbital with four. Last up for today, that purple uh, superscript, that exponent, represents the number of electrons. The sum of the exponents must equal the number of electrons in the atom or ion.
So let's look at another example. Let's say we were looking at aluminum. Aluminum has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, three S two, three P one. So again, we can see that all the S orbitals only have two electrons because an S orbital can only hold a max of two electrons. P orbitals, if they're full, can hold a max of six electrons. So if we were to add up all of the exponents, it should equal the number of electrons in this atom or ion. 2, 4, 10, 12, 13. I have 13 electrons. An aluminum atom, if I look at the periodic table, has an atomic number of 13. So aluminum has 13 protons. It also has 13 electrons. So that's just like a quick little check. Um, make sure when you add up all of your exponents or superscripts, it equals the number of electrons in that atom or ion.